Mental health and addiction has been a long-standing issue across societies around the world. However, in our modern society, as stigma subsides around these issues, conversations and solutions have arisen. In today's episode, we speak with Adrian Chatillon, CEO and founder of Actipulse Neuroscience, a neurotech company specialized in the research and engineering of non-invasive brain stimulation technologies for the treatment of psychiatric and neurological disorders. To get a better understanding of how their company's technology stands to advance mental health and addiction treatment. To kick off the show, Adrian shares the backstory of the two previous startups he founded before Actipulse. The first, a Slack for Students, and the second, a French movie startup. He also discusses the company's goal to bring this technology from a hospital setting to an at-home setting to make it more affordable and how they plan to do this. Adrian also highlights how their technology works and how it can help treat depression, smoking addiction, and anxiety, alongside how they intend to use it to slow down Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And additionally, he talks about a recent study conducted by the company that saw nine out of 10 subjects with smoking addiction stop smoking after treatment using its technology. He explains how they are targeting the dopamine mechanisms in the brain and an upcoming second trial, which is currently underway to help tackle opioid addiction. And before we wrap up the show, Adrian shares what it's been like to go through the Y Combinator program and advice for other startups and entrepreneurs that want to be selected for the program too. Now, if you like this episode, some other episodes you should check out are Mapping the Avenues of Addiction in Our Brains, Connecting Everything to the Internet, Our Future with IoT Technology, and Brain Plasticity, How Technology, Environments, and Language Change Our Brains. I'm Sam Breakgear, and you're listening to Brains Bite Back your podcast exploring the intersection between psychology and technology. Disclosure, this episode contains a client and a Spacio portfolio company. I'm Adrian Chatier, I'm the, the co-founder and CEO of Actipulse Neuroscience, which I co-founded uh, now five years ago, time flies. And uh, at Actipulse, we are specializing in uh, technical non-invasive brain stimulation for the treatment of psychiatric and neurological disorders. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, I'm happy to have you on here today. Obviously, everything we cover is related to psychology and technology. So this seems like a perfect fusion of the two. Now, I'd love to know, um, how did the company begin? Uh, you know, just uh, like, like always, uh, some crazy entrepreneurs with a, with a very uh, distant idea that we thought was a bit crazy at first, and uh, we didn't know if it was going to work. But uh, I guess the core of this was to help people. This is my third startup. And I wanted uh, you know, my, my next entrepreneurial adventure to be one that could help people, that would have a social impact. So when I met my, my co-founder uh, uh, with th- this idea, I said, oh, you know, this is, this is a long shot. And I'm, I never worked in a medical company or scientific company, but you know, uh, I, I think I, I, can, I can help this. Uh, so the, the, the First and foremost was, you know, the idea to help people. And then, you know, looking at, uh, you know, neurological and psychiatric, you know, markets, I thought that this was something very innovative and that, uh, you know, society could need. Cool. Now, out of interest, what were the other startups that you, you worked on beforehand? So my first one was called Smart Pilots, and uh, it was like a Slack for a student. So, you know, that was 10 years ago. I was, uh, I was just finishing, you know, grad school in business. And uh, I realized that a lot of people were working, you know, the, the, a lot of students were working in group projects using, you know, WhatsApp or Facebook group, which was very, you know, not, not the best way to, to work. So we did a project management app for students uh, so they could work their group projects and be connected with their teachers. And it worked quite well for two years, you know, but I was 23, it was my first startup, you know, I was chasing dreams and headlines and uh, investments. And, you know, in entrepreneurship, we always say, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And that time I, I learned a, a great lesson. So that was my first one. My second one was in the movie business in Paris, which was kind of, was very interesting, but very boring because you, you, you spend your time chasing money, you know, investors, uh, so they can produce your, uh, your, your film. So that was very long and boring. So I left that. And uh, this is my third one, you know, Actipulse. Well, they're all very kind of like separate in the sense that they all have like a different themes. So I was expecting them to all be similar along the same lines of actables, but you've got a very kind of diverse uh, resume there. It's true. Yes. Uh, it's, 
I guess, you know, I, I'm really what we could call an entrepreneur, you know, whatever I see an opportunity, uh, I will take it. But, you know, now for the past five years, I've been working uh, in, a, in a medical startup. So uh, I think I've learned quite a lot from this field. And uh, I think hopefully, you know, Actipulse will be my magnum opus. But uh, if I ever have to find another startup, I, I think it'll, it'll, it'll still be now in the medical field. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what they say, third time lucky. So uh, hopefully this is it. Hopefully. <laughs> now, um, I would love to know if there are any other forms of non-invasive brain stimulation technologies uh, for the treatment of psychiatric and neurological diseases that exist. And if so, like, uh, how do they compare with the work you're doing? So there are two variants in non-invasive brain stimulation. Uh, the, it's, the technology varies, but it's mostly uh, magnetic pulses and uh, electricity that's, that's being used. Um, so we use magnetic pulses. So for our listeners, we don't use, you know, uh, magnets. It's just uh, we, uh, we put uh, electricity through a coil and that coil will transform uh, this electricity into magnetic pulses. Uh, that's the, you know, the Faraday principles. And um, while using, you know, different intensities, frequencies, and the positioning of the coil on different parts of the, of the brain, of the scalp, to be exact, and the dosification, so how many, you know, minutes the, the patients will use the, um, the stimulation. Now, with those, you know, four parameters, we can try to treat different pathologies. So right now it's approved for the depression and that's what we're doing, you know, we're bringing this technology. It's normally it's used in a hospital setting currently and now we, we want to bring it to, the, to a home setting. So that's what the, the technology we're, we're using is magnetic pulses. And the other one is, you know, for non-invasive is uh, using electricity, uh, direct electric current. So it's, uh, you know, another, another field, the same principles. There haven't been yet been a study of which one is uh, you know better, like a comparative study. So uh, uh, while it's you know consumers and patients have uh, the choice of using two different types of technologies. Okay, fantastic. Now you mentioned like depression there as an example. Do you have other examples of like the psychiatric, psychiatric and neurological disorders that you're trying to treat? Yeah, so it's mostly approved, um, mostly used. Around ninety percent is for depression in a hospital setting. Uh, it's also been used for uh smoking cessation as well and uh and anxiety and now that um so we can treat those right you can patients can reach remission from those psychiatric diseases now for neurological disorders uh you know the next you know frontier is for example using for parkinson's disease or alzheimer's disease unfortunately we, we you can't cure that and you cannot reach remission so what you know we and other scientists are looking to do is to uh, it, is to try to slow down this is progression, you know, by, you know, we target, you know, the same pathogenic mechanisms that are uh, causing these diseases. Well, at least we're, what we think are causing the diseases in order to slow down this progression. So that, that would be, you know, the, the next big step is that instead of, uh, you know, having a disease such as Alzheimer's where you degenerate in 10 years, well, maybe you can get up to 20 years. That's the, the next step. Awesome. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you say, smoking like this could this could potentially help with those who have like smoking habits yeah smoking and addictions um so we actually published uh, the results from a study uh last year for smoking cessation we we're comparing it to the nicotine patch and it worked quite well uh so patients using you know neural relation uh nine out of ten you know did stop smoking after after the a trim, a trim of treatment uh, while well, obviously nicotine patch was 10 out of 10, which is today the, the golden standard. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're targeting the, the, the dopamine, dopamine mechanisms in the brain. So, yeah, I know that some patients can be treated. Um, so it works, it works quite well. And uh, right now we're starting a, a second trial for that. And we want to see if we can target uh, you know, opioid addiction, which is the same mechanisms uh, as for smoking addiction, for nicotine addiction. So hopefully we can treat, you know, this a major... Uh, opioid crisis in the US and the rest of the world. So hopefully we can bring a treatment for that as well. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. And if you are, make sure you subscribe and never miss an episode. You can find us on all your usual podcast sites, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and a whole lot more, including YouTube. And we want to hear what you think. 
so be sure to leave us a review. Just search Brains Bite Back wherever you get your podcasts. Fantastic. Now, I'm so fascinated by this because addiction is something that we've discussed before on the show. And obviously, there are different types of addiction. You mentioned like opioids and um, like nicotine. But would it be able to help with like all forms of addiction, even if something was like alcoholism or even to the extent of like gambling? Well, it's true that it's, most of them, you know, is the same part of the brain and the same mechanism you know, of, of dopamine. So it could be, I, I think, would be true, um, would be risky, you know, to talk about this, uh, these problems, which uh, I don't have data for, but I'm, I'm sure for nicotine and opioids, we, we've studied it and it's the same mechanism. So I think we can surely treat those. Obviously, you know, the results from the clinical trials will tell us if we're wrong or right, but from the data that we already have, I think we're in the correct path. That's awesome, Tia. That's really inspiring. And essentially, it would be like, so how does it work? You said you want to bring it to people's homes. So what would that look like in like uh, someone's home setting? Well, the, the current challenge is that, you know, normalization, especially TMS treatment, uh, you require up to 30 sessions and it's uh, one session per day of 45 minutes. So if you're commuting you know, to, the, to the clinic, to the hospital, that's around you know, an hour and a half that you're, you need to take for a, for a day. And it's quite expensive. In the US, it's around $15,000 for the treatment. So that's a big, you know, a, a big challenge uh, to democratize access to that treatment. So the goal is for us to bring that treatment for direct to the home of the patient. So that device that is obviously much smaller, but is as clinically effective and as safe uh, as in from a hospital setting. So um, patients, ideally in the future, when they go and see the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist will give them a, a device, will teach them how to use it, and then they can take it from home. And uh, the treatment will be around uh, eight weeks treatment, twice uh, per day. And um, that's, that, that's the goal. And obviously, so more people can have access to it, obviously, uh, to a much more interesting price point than $15,000. So that, that's our goal. And we have our FDA pivotal trial starting uh, next uh, month. So hopefully we'll be in the homes of US patients uh, in 24 months. Fantastic. Well, good luck with that. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, yeah, there, there's so much opportunity here if that, that does go ahead. Now, uh, you've mentioned a little bit about um, some studies and stuff that you're working on, but I would love it if you can share examples of uh, what you are working on at the moment and the results of your technology so far. So we, we have quite a lot of publications for, for depression, which have some, some excellent results. Uh, we also have some publication, like I mentioned, for smoking cessation. We also did a pilot trial for Alzheimer's disease, which was, was a bit more difficult, especially with, uh, with COVID that impacted patient recruitment. But we did see some interesting things from that trial. And we have a second uh, follow-up trial for Alzheimer's disease starting uh, in uh, two months. So we're very excited about that. We know that it's going to be a hard nut to crack. You know, it's, it's a very complicated pathology. And um, from the diagnosis, from for the treatment, you know, it's, it's very complicated. But I think we, as scientists, we have a responsibility uh, with patients that if maybe we have something in our hands, we need to go and, and, and look for it. You know, even if it's very costly, this kind of trials, I think, you know, we have the the, we need to be, we have the ethic, you know, compass and the, the moral compass that we need to go out and seek those answers. And maybe we'll see, maybe it hopefully will slow down this progression. Obviously, that would, that would be an amazing uh, uh, find. But if not, we'll probably find uh, some interesting data that will ho ho hopefully help other scientists out there once the data is published. Let's hope we can uh, get further to that goal. And I, I admire that. I admire the work you're doing. And I suppose I really only have one last question for you. And I'd love to know, like, other than the things that you've already mentioned, like what is on the horizon um, for your folks at uh, Acti Pulse Neuroscience? So, you know, we're, we're, right now we're part of uh, Y Combinator. So we have our demo day coming up in March. And uh, so that would, we're very excited working on that. And once we, you know, fin we close that investment, well, you know, I, oh, most of the money will go to a clinical pipeline. So we have a, a few diseases in neurology and psychiatry that we're, we're studying. And that's our goal, you know, to bring this treatment, find some, some clinical answers for, for patients and, you know, take it from there. You know, it's, uh, now it's, well, we're in our fifth year. Uh, we have some exciting data coming up. 
So uh, that's our goal, you know, to focus on those clinical uh, trials, get the results, and we'll, we'll take it from there, hopefully be able to help as many patients as we can. Awesome. Now, I, I would be curious to know as well, um, why Combinator is also a very like prestigious and like, well-known um, organization. What's that been like for you um, from the the start of like joining them joining them and like what the stage you're at now like could you talk us through the process of what it's been like as a startup going through that yes it's been very honestly it's been uh you know for uh, i mean for the companies it, it's great right because of the of the prestige the branding and the money we're getting from ic but personally as entrepreneur you know it's uh uh it's something we as entrepreneurs we we want to go for you know yc it's uh uh it, it's something very important for, for all of us. So we're very excited about that. So it was very difficult to get, you know, uh, this year there was 17,000 patients and they selected 400 startups. So we're very happy to be part of, uh, of this batch. And up to now, you know, the, all the, everything that they given to us and the network and the knowledge base and has been extremely valuable and it lives up to the legend and the myth of, of uh, Y Combinator. You know, it's uh, at first we were wondering if it's worth worth you know the seven percent of the equity, and up to now, I mean, I can definitely say it's uh, it lives to the standards. Fantastic. Now we have a large following um, in a lot of like startup hubs, and if anyone is listening to this and they would like to be in an upcoming batch of uh, Y Combinator, is is there any advice that you could give them to um, further their chances of, uh, yeah, I suppose like following suit, following yourself, and getting in, in there? Uh, you know, I, I read one one day somebody says you either have a hundred percent chance of getting into YC or zero percent chance. I think it it's really if so. What YC? It's very difficult to understand how they choose startups because they choose that they have you know so many startups and from different industries and from uh, different um, uh, stages. You know, from you know very early PowerPoint to you know massive scale ups uh, startups. So, but if you have you know it's it's always free to try, so I think everybody should try. And um, as long as you have the, the right traction, the right products, and the right team, I think it's worth taking your shot on. So you never know. And if you if you're willing to take the chance, just just take it. I think it's, it's worth it. I don't think you know there's a lot of websites out there and trying to crack and find the you know like a method or a uh, you know the, the answer of how to get in. At, but there's no real secret. I mean, you just need to try. And, and if you have the right traction and and also, if you are you are in the right, you know, market. For example, we're in the, in the mental health, and right, right now, mental health is huge, right, due to COVID, and and uh, people talking more about their, taking care of their mental health. So, just take the shot. I mean, I, I don't think there's like a secret sauce to it, really. Yeah, I mean, it certainly can't hurt, and I'm super happy to hear that the work you're doing is really bringing us forward into a future where, yeah, we are in a better state of dealing with mental health for a variety of issues. And if people are interested in keeping up with um, the work you're doing or reaching out to you personally, Adrian, uh, what are the means for them to do that? Like, is there social media you can recommend or do you want to point them to a, a website or anything? Yeah, so, they, you know, they can find us on uh, all the news. Uh, we mostly post them on our company's LinkedIn page. And they can find me as well on LinkedIn, you know, so Adrian Chat, you know, or they can always email me at adrian at actables.com. Super. And we'll have uh, links to your LinkedIn and your website in the description of this podcast. But otherwise, Adrian, I want to say, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and the work you're doing. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend, Aldi. Growing a company has many hurdles. From securing funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search, each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing, and that's where our sponsor Publicize comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds on your business's online presence and gets high-quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. And for a limited time only, exclusive to Brains Bite Back listeners, you can receive a social media assessment as part of your package for any tier of service at no extra charge with this special promotion. To find out more, visit publicize.co slash BBB. That's publicize.co slash BBB.
This is the end of today's show. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this and you want to hear more episodes just like it, then follow and subscribe to Brains Bite Back wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available on YouTube under the channel of our publication, The Sociable. Just search Brains Bite Back and you'll find all of our episodes there. We really love hearing what you have to say. So leave us a review on iTunes or on any other podcasting platform to let us know what you think. You can also reach out on Twitter at, at The Sociable. And finally, go to sociable.co where you can find all our episodes and plenty of articles on topics just like this. Thanks again for joining us. And until next time, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.